Hello and welcome to this video guys. Today we're going to create our first API with Nest.js. We're going to utilize MySQL and we're going to use Typeform for this. So essentially Nest.js is a progressive Node.js framework used for building efficient, scalable and reliable service-side applications. So it's built with modern JavaScript and uses TypeScript, which enables the type checking. So if you're used to working with Angular, this will be very positive news for you because both uses TypeScript uh, Nest.js comes with dependency injection. Um, it has an MVC architecture, so the, it also has C CLI based tools, uh, which means you can generate stuff from the CLI in the similar way you can do it in Angular. Uh, both of them utilizes RxJS, so it's a reactive way of programming. All right, so let's get started with. So to get started with, it, the first thing we need to do is to install the Nest.js CLI. I'm automatically assuming you have download, no, downloaded Node already and NPM. So let's go ahead and install Nest.js CLI. It can take some time. As soon as that is done, we are going to create our first project with the CLI in this case. So let's make this screen a bit bigger. And now what we can do is we can generate a new project by writing nest new and we're going to give it the project name in this case which is going to be dev by sep or we can just in this case just give it nest.js. And this might take some time. Uh, here you can choose whatever package manager, manager you would like. I usually use npm. And as mentioned this might take some time. It's creating all of the boilerplate files and so on. So we'll be right back once this is up and running. All right, so once that is done, we should have a folder called Nest.js with a couple of different things inside here. Then you know we're up and set for this. There's a couple of more packages we need to install. We need to install <clears throat> Nest.js Typeworm. We need to install Typeworm and MySQL 2. So the Nest.js Typeworm is essentially the package provided to, to integrate it with Nest.js and Typeform in this case is the library itself, and then we have MySQL 2, which is the actual MySQL driver for, for Typeform. All right, so let's install that, and we will be right back once that has been installed. All right, now when we have installed the package, we can navigate to the app module. In this case, we are going to import the Typeform module, module, and we're going to say for root, just like we do in Angular specifying that this is the root, you'll specify which type of database you want. It could be Postgres, it could be MySQL. In this case, we're only utilizing MySQL. So just pre-add a couple of things. So usually the username would be root, the password would just be an empty string. This is usually how the local uh, storage works. So we'll create a database. I already have one database. I will get to show you that soon, then by set. Is the name of the actual database. Uh, we're going to have entities and here is just going to specify an empty array. Here is where we will add entities that we have. So if you have worked with GPAs in, in Java or if you have worked with entity framework in, in .NET, this is quite similar to how you have been working before. So, so we'll synchronize true. This means that every change we make locally will make changes to the database. So this obviously needs to be set to false in production mode. So just keep in mind that this is only for testing purposes. All right, so once that's done, we can generate our first resource, but let's make sure we check out our project before doing that. So we'll see the nest.js, so that's our project, and we can write nest generate resource user in this case. So user is the name of your resource, essentially. So generating this, it will create a couple of things for us. So bear in mind, it will ask us which transportation layer we want and we're going to say we want a REST API and we're also going to say yes, we want you to create the CRUD entry points for us. So breaking that down, it will create a folder for us, as you can see here, with a couple of different things. So details would be the data transfer objects. It could be how the data would look like when you create an object or update an object. Here is essentially where you add the types for it or classes or whatever you want it to be. Then we have an entity file we'll get here shortly. So this will specify what type of columns you will have in your database and so on. And we have the controller. So if you're used to working with MVC structure, you would, you would understand that the controller for that case would be what actually communicates with the repository. In our case, it works quite similar, I would say. So here you have, this is the entry point of the API. So this would be 
slash user and whatever you have here so slash user if you post to slash user it will call this function if you get on slash user it will essentially trigger this and hence this one calls find all in the service so what remains to be done here is essentially make sure that we're calling the database so what we need to do is we need to inject a couple of things so first and foremost we will um, go back to our entity make sure we have an entity all right, so now when we're in the entity, there's a couple of things we want to do. So first and foremost, we want to import the entity. We want to give it the entity decorator. This is going to, to tell us that, all right, this is the user entity. And the thing we want to add here is something called primary generated column. It would be auto incremented value that you have in your database. And we would continue by adding a couple of columns. So first name, last name, email, and password. All right, so keep in mind, this is the first lesson. So just let's try to essentially achieve these, connect it to the database, make sure that we can call something from the database. All right, so within the controller here, we have some issues here. It seems like the CLI has not, yeah, there was some linting issues. Going back here, we can see we have our configuration up and running. Let's remove that and go get back here. And let's see, some, some strange things happen. So I need to revert it real quick. I think it imported a couple of things already for us. Um, all right, so after creating our Typeworm configuration, uh, the user module should automatically be added to the app module. So the schematics will do this for us. Um, so once we have imported the module, there's still one thing we need to do. We need to first and foremost import the entities here. So in this case, our entity was named user. That's one thing. Second thing we need to do is to import typeworm for feature in this case. And here you can specify an array of features. In our case, it's only the user entity. All right. So once this is up and running, let's go ahead and save. So now we have an entity, we have specified the user as an entity, we have done a couple of things. So now we need to set up the database. As I mentioned before, I'm using um, XAMPP for this. So what you need to do in XAMPP in order for you to get started with this, you have the Apache started, we can start the MySQL as well. So now you have a visual GUI, a PHP my admin to actually log into the database to see the different fields and so on. So once this is done, you can just click on the admin here. It should open a browser for you and it should open localhost slash PHP my admin. And here we can select the database that I have. If you do not have any database, you can go back to the home and you can create a database from here. So clicking new, you should be able to create a database here. Let's call it dev by Seb. I already have one and that's why it's going to give me an error. But imagine if you didn't have one, it will create it for you. And as you can see, it's, it's serving on all right as i mentioned earlier i'm using XAMPP for actually having the mysql database locally so what you can do after you have installed it you can start the apache server and then you can start the mysql server and clicking on admin here it will essentially prompt a a, a window for you which comes to the database GUI. so in this case it would be php admin and what you can do here is you can create a a new database so in my case it's it's named dev by seb i will create create it so now we have a database named dev by seb all right that's all you need to do here you do not need to mix sure with anything else uh, given that the setup of the exam was was correct so going back to the to the code we should be able to essentially spin up the project. And in order for us to spin it up, we can look at the pack JSON. There's a couple of scripts already. So we want to start with the watch mode because when we do that, it will reload once we save, which is essentially going to give us a, all right. So I need to check out the folder again. Sorry for this. Once that is done, I can run the start dev. So once this is up and running, we should be able to navigate to the window, to the Chrome for this, and we can go ahead and do that by navigating to localhost slash users. So we did not have slash users, so we have slash user, and this action returns all users. Now going back to the code, you will be able to see, let's put them side by side to make it more easy for us to work with. All right, so having them side by side now, it should be able, 
much easier for us to actually see a couple of different different things. So first and foremost, we can see that it's loading. We can also see that the it returns all the user here. If we go to the user service here, you'll see what it does. This action returns all users. So it comes here uh, to the uh, to the controller, which is essentially slash user, and then the controller calls the find all function here. So what we need to do now is essentially connect the service with the uh, with the uh, repository that we have. So what you need to do is you need to, in the constructor, we will do with inject repository. And here is, you're going to specify the entity. In this case, it's user. And we're going to define it pre private read only user repository. And we're going to give it the type as well. So after you have this, we, sh we have injected the repository, sorry, now we have injected the repository and we can go ahead and communicate with the database. So in this case, we could say um, return this dot user repository dot find and it should return all of the users. So reloading this page, it should give us an empty array since or it should crash like it did. But as you can see here, it returns an empty array. And this is because um, now it communicates with the backend and we have no item. We could do the same thing now for find one. So find one by and then you can pass in the ID as an object in this way. So it will it will type match the ID uh, in this way. So you can also do the same thing for update. So let's simplify for us that update. Uh, we have a, a DTO already for this, which is not filled in right, right now. So, all right. So, and we can just copy this to the crate. And obviously we do not have any ID when we create something. And lastly, we want to have the remove or delete, sorry, the delete logic. And here we're going to pass in the ID. So now we have an API communicating through post, get, uh, get, up, put, and delete. So what we can do now is we can head on to the database just to, to test a couple of things. We can go to the database and we can just reload here and you should see that we have uh, the user column. So as, as we have the user column, we can just open it. So now we can just, uh, we can create a new user. So you would create, press add, this is in Swedish. So hello world, you can add new and uh, hello at world.com, uh, my pass. Let's give it a couple of dummy values. So saving this and reloading this page. Now we should receive the user that we created. So. With this, my friends, we have connected it to the database and now we are in fact up and running with the get result. We could also try with get one. We know the ID, the ID is one, so we can do slash one. It should give us an object, object of this user, which is quite uh, update. All right, so once we have the this kind of logic, we have the update, we have the get, we can try them out by either having a front end doing it or we could add uh, Postman or Insomnia any tools for this. So I'm, in my case, I'm going to use Insomnia. So I will be right back with that open. All right, so now we have Insomnia up and running. We can try the API by, by sending a GET request. You'll see the same response with it from the URL, sending just one. And now we're going to try out what happens when we are going with the POST in this case. So we'll change the POST. We can just copy the data from here and we're going to set the body. It's going to be of type JSON and we can pass in the body here. So we'll pass in not an ID, but rather all of the other things. And sending this, we should generate a user. So as you can see here, 201 generated, this is the user. And what it does is essentially just returning what it created. All right, so now we know that we have been able to post, we can go back to get and we can send get and we should be able to see more than one user. So, all right, in order for us to get up and working, I meant I saw an issue we had. So the issue is essentially we cannot use create, it should be save. So save should, is going to save it into the database. So in this case, um, and obviously not here, but rather in the repository. So we'll have the save here. So saving will generate it. So we can go back to insomnia once again to see what would happen. We post it. And you will see that it, it returns the created object here with an ID as well. And now if we go back to get, we should be able to receive two items. So if we now would try out the put in this case, we are going to update the first one. We're going to set hello, updated and saving this. And you will see cannot find 
input user so essentially if we go back to the code once again we should be able to see that there is a couple of things we are missing so we're using patch in this case so we need to go back to insomnia once again and change it to patch so changing to patch you can do it it's quite similar so it will update whatever you you pass in so doing this it will give you uh, one affected row it will give you a couple of data here what happened so if you fetch the user again you see that it has hello updated all right so now we have we have tested great put post uh, delete alongside with patch um, I think this is it for this video guys if you have any questions feel free to to leave them in the comment thank you for watching all of the best bye